Welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute-related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 60, Flute Studio Highlights with Sarah Robertson at Sand Dollar Music. Today's gold sponsor is brought to you by the Interactive Flute Retreat. Join Project Trio at the 5th Interactive Flute Retreat, an all-inclusive event on the private shores of South Haven, Michigan, August 16th through the 19th, 2019. The retreat is a unique opportunity to continue learning and growing in a peaceful environment with world-class instructors. Walk away rejuvenated, improve your skills, and form memories in a picturesque location. Registration is now open. Please visit interactiveflutretreat.com. Welcome everyone to another Flute 360 podcast episode. Today we are talking with Sarah Robertson, who is a flutist and teacher located in the Dayton, Ohio area. She co-teaches at Sand Dollar Music with her colleague, Kristen Coffey Rando, who is a vocalist. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Heidi. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast. Definitely. Thank you for sharing your time. And I'm so excited to pick your brain and see what you've been up to this academic year. Well, I can't wait to share. Excellent. So for the listeners who may or may not know you, could you please share your musical background and the very unique meaning behind your company's name, Sand Dollar Music? Oh, sure. Yes. Okay. So my degrees are in music education and flute performance, and I have been a band director, a general music teacher. I've taught pre-K through 12, and I've also done um, some adjunct college work. And through it all, I just have maintained a private flute studio. So a couple of years ago, I was feeling pretty burned out in music ed, trying to maintain my family life and be a mom and a wife. And my friend Kristen approached me and said, hey, what if we start a music studio? And I was like, maybe, <laughs> but I, I didn't know if I wanted to let go of classroom music and go solely into studio teaching. Um, but the more I thought about it, I thought it could be a very fun adventure and I love teaching private flute lessons. So let's do it. So we did. And she, like you said, she's a vocalist. I'm a flutist. And we just sat down two years ago, this coming June, and established what our studio was going to look like. Um, so you asked about the name, Sand Dollar Music. And Kristen is a very accomplished vocalist. And she was going through a season in her life where she just felt like music would not be a part of her life again. And she said she was walking down the beach and we're both women of faith. And, and she was praying, Lord, if music is going to be something that is going to be a part of my life, please just show me a sign. Mm -hmm. And she said the beach where they were, there, there are never sand dollars. I guess the I don't know. I don't live on the West Coast. But <laughs> I guess the ocean is really rough and sand dollars don't up, come onto the beach whole. And so she's walking and she finds a sand dollar and another one. And another one and another one. And she said her arms were so full of sand dollars, she couldn't pick up anymore, but she kept seeing more and more in the distance. And she walked away from that, just really believing that God used that experience to say, hey, you're going to do something and you're going to do something big. Wait till the time is right. And then fast forward four or five years and she approaches me and says, the season is right do you want to do this? Mm -hmm. And I said, sure. And we wanted to incorporate the sand dollar into that. So that's where the name comes from. We are in the Midwest. And so we're asked often, where in the world did you come up with sand dollar music? <laughs> <laughs> but that's why, like it has a very poignant meaning, meaning to us. So anyway, we do have a unique style to our studio. We don't have a centralized like brick and mortar building. Kristen teaches out of her home and I teach at a local high school. I also have um, a studio that I sublease so students can come to either location. 
the high school is wonderful because the students just come to me during band class or immediately after school. It just fits with their structure and it's just a, a time efficient method. Hmm. But our studio is a boutique studio. And so that means we offer unique advantages and benefits and they're all tailored to address the students specific needs and goals and at a flat, simple rate. Hmm. So that's kind of our mission. Like we want to meet each student where they're at. And we want to empower them to take their next step. And that's going to look different for each student because they're all at different levels. Hmm. And then we have all these benefits that we offer as a boutique studio. I won't get into all of them, but like studio-wide collaboration opportunities, at least two recitals a year, additional performance opportunities in the community, festival and competition opportunities. Uh, we waive accompanist and recital fees. So all the parent has to do is pay one flat rate a month and all the stuff is included in it. Hmm. So parents really appreciate that. And we like it because our goal is to find that untapped ability and potential in each student and reach that. Hmm. So that's what our, that's what we do at $10 Music. That's amazing. Thanks. It's fun. Yeah. I love the packages. Like you said, just what is included in the month and laying it out. I think that's really tangible and easy for a parent or a student to follow. Oh, yes. Yep. And we have like 15 bullet points of everything that we offer. So it's laid out and it's clear and the parents understand what they're receiving. I love what you said about meeting the students where they're at. That's one of my teaching philosophies. Yes. And I can't take full credit for that because one of my teachers and mentors, Dr. Sarah McCoy, who's the director of bands at Texas Tech University, taught that to the symphonic wind ensemble, you know, course. And, you know, I think literally hearing those words changed my whole viewpoint as a teacher. And it made so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, a lot of times, well, early teacher Heidi would come into a lesson just thinking, okay, you know, you're a senior in high school, you quote unquote should be here. (laughs) But that doesn't mean anything because a 12th grader in high school could have had two years of flute lessons before me, no lessons before me, or she could have been playing or he could have been playing six years before they saw me. So right. how is a 12th grader should or shouldn't be somewhere? You know what I mean? So meeting the student where they're at was so profound. I kind of relaxed as a teacher, <laughs> you know, and just hearing and assessing where, where the kid is right then and there and then meeting them and then taking them to that next level uh, slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really, um, I got goosebumps when you said that because it just... <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Um, I think that's a great mentality for teachers to have. I agree. I remember in college, I went to five different schools, but one of my teachers was Darlene Dugan in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I remember going to a lesson in tears. And I said, I think it was a junior and an undergrad. And I said, there's a freshman at school and she's so much better than me. And I'm never going to be her. (laughs) <laughs> Darlene looked at me and said, Sarah, there are always going to be flutists who are better than you. There are always going to be flutists who do not play as well. But it doesn't matter who's behind you or who's in front of you. You need to find your goal and where do you want to be and focus on that. And that was transformational for me in my career. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before. I was always comparing myself to yeah. other flute players around me. <laughs> and so I try to take that and implement it in my studio all the time. Because mm-hmm. comparison and competition is, su- well, at least in in Dayton, <laughs> yeah. it is such an issue. Mm-hmm. And it really, the students find their identity in others instead of what they want to become as a flutist. And so I'm always trying to reteach what Darlene so profoundly said to me when I was a junior in college. Mm. Isn't it wonderful when you get those life teachers, not just music teachers, but life teachers, and you're like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I have a gem or had a gem, you know, 
in that teacher, in that moment, in that season of my life. And thank goodness <laughs> for him or right. her, because, you know, now I'm so much better of a person, player, teacher, whatever. And we need those yes. very positive influences in our life. Oh, yes, I agree. <laughs> so the other thing I, that I heard you say in that background that I have to point out, I think <laughs> it's amazing how open you are about saying that you and Kristen are women of faith and just seeing how God used you and Kristen and seeing how Kristen was waiting in that season of her life, you know, for that perfect timing and the, you know, that snap that go, now's right. the moment, you know, I right. think we can all... Uh, relate to that in some capacity because, I mean, we have, not to sound cheesy, but it's so true. We have valleys and we have hills, you know, and mm -hmm. like some moments in our life, we are down in the pits <laughs> yeah. and we're like, how do I get out of here? And then sometimes we are literally on that mountain peak and we're up on top and, but we know that's going to be short lived because mm -hmm. you're going to find that valley, you know, soon enough. But, um, just seeing how right. God worked in Kristen and yours life to say, you know, wait, wait, the season's coming. And then mm -hmm. to see all those sand dollars along the shoreline, that gives me goosebumps. <laughs> it's such a beautiful story. I love it. And she came to me at such just a difficult time in my life, mm -hmm. professionally, mm -hmm. where I was at a point, I felt so burnt out as a band director. I didn't see how it would be possible that I would ever pick up my flute and play it professionally again. Mm. My life was so consumed in that classroom. I mean, I taught a couple of private flute lessons. I, I've, I mean, I've always taught a couple of private flute lessons <laughs> since college because, you know, mm. we bring in supplementary income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I thought, man, why did I, why did I pick the flute as an instrument? Why am I trying I don't know. I, I just didn't see a profession in it. Hmm. And I thought, man, I wasted all that money outside of the fact that I was a band director, but I missed it. Hmm. I missed the flute and I missed having one-on-one -on -one interaction with students who loved that instrument as much as I did. Hmm. And I felt like I couldn't give my all in the classroom and give my all to my, my own children and my husband and my family Mm -hmm. in an effective way. And so when she came to me and said, Hey, why don't you let that part go? And let's just focus on flute. It was like a breath of fresh air. I just mm -hmm. felt a burden, just leave my life. <laughs> like, I can do that. I can pick up the flute again. Let's play. <laughs> and nice. I can't tell you the joy I have felt the past couple of years. It's been a wonderful transformation. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. You can't work. I mean, just hearing your story, you can't be stretched too thin. You're going to get burnt out and then you're not right. good to anyone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. So for the timing and just, you know, seeing that um, friend come in and scoop you up, it's like, oh, you know, it's just um, it's a happy ending. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Very cool. So talking about, you know, you and Kristen starting off this business, um, Looking at this past year, um, mm -hmm. are there any specific like accomplishments that Sand Dollar Music um, has achieved that you would like to share with the listeners? Sure. So you posed that question to me, and I have so many things that I could <laughs> share, and it just makes me so proud of my students. Mm. But I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. So sure. I'm going to pinpoint some highlights. The first thing. I thought I'd share. I love the fact that Kristen and I collaborate together. So she's a vocalist and I'm a flutist and we offer monthly studio classes and we combine them. Hmm. And as I think many musicians know, the flute and the voice are very similar. So it's been really fun to organize these studio classes and any, anything from like, okay, why don't we take a low breath <laughs> and in a, a dark breath, raise the soft palate and see if we can sustain that phrase a little bit longer. And all the vocalists go, oh, they do that too. 
<laughs> and it's so fun. And then the flute player is the same way. Kristen will share something from the vocal aspect and they'll look at me and say, voice students have to do that too. Mm. So I think it's so great for them to see that the flute isn't like the sole being of all of the instruments and, and the voice isn't just voice alone. Let's see how things carry through. Mm and what what relates from one instrument to the next. Hmm. And that's been really fun to watch the students have those aha moments when they see that things relate through voice and flute. Very cool. Yeah, it's been neat. One thing we really stress in at Sand Dollar is collaboration and community building. And I have a flute choir And they played at a few assisted living homes through the Christmas season. And oh my goodness, they were such a blessing to those wonderful folks. And the kids loved playing. The folks loved hearing them. But I think the most amazing moment is afterwards when they're done playing. And these wonderful elderly people come up and start talking to them about their flutes. And they reminisce about their childhood and their high school years and college years. And some of them maybe even majored in music and all of my students then are seeing, Oh my goodness, music carries through the ages. Mm -hmm. And I just impacted these wonderful people in a way that I wouldn't have had I not been a part of the school choir and had I not walked through these doors. Mm -hmm. So I really, I love our, my flute choir and we do some, some other venues as well, but I just love bringing them to a place where they can experience community and, and reach out to, to others who may not have the joy of music easily mm. accessible to them, readily accessible to them. Nice. So that's fun. Mm. And then, as I mentioned, Sand Dollar is all about meeting the student where they're at. So I have a handful of students who thrive on competition and auditioned for, we have the Central Ohio Flute Association. They have a competition every year. And so they auditioned for, for um, their age division. And while none of them made it to the final round, I was really proud of their prep work and their dedication and their desire to learn and grow through the experience. Because it takes a lot, of, a lot of work to sit and work through um, Mozart's on Dante and C or yeah. whatever piece it is that they're working on, right? Definitely. But they did it. Uh, they did it. And I was so proud of them. Mm. And I had a few of my students audition for, we have a local discover classical young artist search contest and we're still waiting on those results. But again, Mm. the dedication that those girls put into that audition CD, I was so proud of them. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy finding what each student thrives on and then finding something to help feed that. Yeah. Yeah. I love um, just those aha moments that you referred to earlier. I think Mm -hmm. that's, you know, when you find a teacher who's, you know, really into the profession of teaching, I think us educators thrive off of those aha moments, right? Whereas that light bulb Mm -hmm. goes off, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a high. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. And I tell my kiddos that, too, when when. I see that light bulb go mm-hmm. off and their eyes sparkle, you know, and their mouth mm-hmm. drops or something. You know, I will say, you just had an aha moment. And they're like, oh, yeah, I just, you know, that makes so much <laughs> sense. I'm like, and I tell them right then and there, this is what I live for, right, right here and now, you know. Exactly. And um, yeah. I think they get tickled, you know, to hear that their teacher gets excited too with them. Um, right. Yeah. And I love how you said collaboration and networking. Those are all such great foundations to showcase the kids at such an early age. So that way mm-hmm. they can um, continue that throughout their career, even if it's not music. Right. Exactly. And it's been so fun. I like to encourage them to find an individual goal. So for one student, it might be vibrato. Another student might be overcoming stage fright. Hmm. Another student, it might be tone development. Hmm. And I actually have you to credit for this, Heidi. You interviewed Dr. Terry Sanchez. Hmm. And I I think that was the first time I'd heard of her. So she had, um, oh, goodness, I'm going to embarrass myself. And I can't remember the name of her warm up. Oh, not Uh, at all. The epic warm up? Yes, yes, that one. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I started implementing that into my students' warm ups, warm up routines in January. Man, that woman was onto something because mm. by March, 
I had a student who hasn't been able to play vibrato for a year be able to play vibrato due to that vibrato exercise. Wow. I had two students <gasps> whose upper register was so pinched as soon as they said, and we've been doing harmonics, but Terry just made such a fun workout out of it yeah. that the kids love it. Yeah. And so these two kids who like struggle with their upper registers just pinched and closed as soon as they started doing her, her harmonic study, it opened up. Uh, and both of them, they went to do their band placement auditions and the band director said, what happened? Where yeah. did that sound come from? And they were just so excited. And I was so excited. It was just so fun to find something that worked for so many different techniques mm. in, in flute development. It's made such a difference in my studio. So oh. thank you to you and thank you to her. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to clap over here because <laughs> that's the first time I've ever done that on the podcast. But that is, I mean, <laughs> that is full circle. I mean, come on. You yes. can't get better than that. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, yes. here's this platform that I'm grateful to be a part of. And I learned so much from it. And I learned so much from the people I talked to. And here, you know, our collaboration started a couple months ago and um, even last mm -hmm. year when you commented um, on episode one. And then here we are doing an interview and then a past interview, Terry's epic warm up helped one of your students, yes. you know, and that's just like unbelievable for me. And so thank you for sharing that because it it reminds me of why I'm doing this, you know. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, well, I'm going to have to... I really appreciate what you're doing. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Sarah. It's been wonderful. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm going to have to send this link to uh, Terry so she can hear, because I know it will mean the world to her. <laughs> and actually... Yes, please th do. Actually, that's so funny that you mentioned that, because this is so unplanned, guys, I swear. <laughs> this week, this <laughs> Saturday, <laughs> Terry Sanchez's flute studio is being highlighted. So here we are recording. <laughs> and that's so funny. Oh my gosh, I love that's amazing. it. amazing. Yeah, I love it. Well, tell her I said thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I sure will. Excellent. Today's sponsor is brought to you by J&K Productions. Did you know that not only are they a production company for podcasts, but they are a recording company for musicians? Any musical recording needs that you may have, J&K Productions can fulfill that need. They have all the necessary equipment and expertise to record your next flute recording for college or graduate auditions, competitions, summer festivals, or a flute album. J&K Productions can record any setup imaginable from solo flute, small chamber, flute and piano, and much more. Consider J&K Productions for your next recording project. Contact them at jkproductions.media. So are there any other moments throughout this year, whether it was a teaching moment or a performing moment, something that you'd like to highlight and share? Again, it's probably, you know, I'm being very vague, but kind of going back to those aha moments where we just mm -hmm. think, oh man, that really impacted me. Sure. So I have a student, Julia, who I have taught since eighth grade. She's now a senior and she's going to major in music ed in the fall. But this past year, like well, I have always so much enjoyed working with Julia, but mm. this past year has been really fun because it's been all about audition prep yes. and watching her prepare for all of these auditions and take ownership of what school she wants to audition for and mm. how should she be prepared. And I just love seeing that growth in my students, mm. seeing them take the responsibility. And I, I would give an assignment. You need to email this professor mm. by next week. Let me know what he says or she says, and she would do it. And all but one of the schools that she auditioned for, she was accepted into. Oh. So I was so proud of her. And she chose Bowling Green. Oh. So she'll be going there in the fall. That's with Connor um, Nelson then. Yes. Yes. Excellent. It sure is. Yeah. And so then she came to COPA, the Central Ohio Food Association. They have a big flute fair. Mm -hmm. And so... Well, I mean, you know, it's like a quarter the size of the NFA, but yeah. for Ohio, it's a good size. Yeah. So she came to test some flute so she could do a flute upgrade. And we went to a couple of different tables. She was testing, testing, and 
she thought for sure she wanted, she, she was enjoying this pal that she was testing. So, um, they sent us over to the, the pal table and lo and behold, one of the graduate teaching students at the pal table is at Bowling Green and was in Julia's, was sat in on Julia's audition. Mm. So she was like, I know you. <laughs> and then the wonderful people at the pal table informed her that, um, Connor plays a pal. And mm. so she did all kinds of testing on the head joints and she found her perfect pal. But she was, I mean, it, she had no idea. She didn't know what the people at Bowling Green played, but she chose the same flute. And so she's part of the, the Paul family, which is, that's what Connor plays. Yeah. And, uh, also the, I can't remember the, the sweet girl, but the, the teaching, um, assistant as well as what she played. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just really fun to see how all of that came together. Yeah. And I'm just so excited for her. And we're going to work on technique and college prep this summer, um, before she heads off to school, but it's been really neat to walk through this journey with her since eighth grade. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's neat to see them. What's eighth grade. Is that like 12 years old? Yeah, it's 13 ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then to graduate high school, 18. So being with them for five years and then helping them get Mm -hmm. into college, you know, especially like the, you know, the music program where they get to continue their studies. It's really neat to see that. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. It's, yeah, it's just so fun. They're like, they become your own children in a yeah. way. They're like your little flute family. So I'm yeah. just proud of her. When you mentioned your summer prep, are you basically filling in the gaps as much as you can? I mean, she can't be completely 110% ready because you never are. No. But are you filling in the gaps of where there might be some holes in order to get her that much more prepared to work with Connor? Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. Okay. So... Because, uh, I mean, we all know what this is like, but because the year was spent with college audition and yeah. prep, I felt as though a lot of the technique went to the wayside. So we'll be doing a lot of etude study, okay. uh, Taffanel and Gobert, probably pull out the Andersons yeah. <laughs> and just try to get finger flexibility and dexterity Mm-hmm. better and then help her become more um, acclimated to her, her new instrument through tone studies. Yeah. And um, yeah, just really try to fill in the, the holes that have occurred over the past year or so. Perfect. The reason I ask is because I have some students who are also graduating 12th grade and going into college into music programs. And I feel sure. the same thing. They, they're they kind of checked out. They're like, well, solo and ensemble contest is done. You yeah. know, we just finished that. <laughs> you know, and what you said, too, throughout the year, there's so many band requirements that some things just, you know, get kind of swept under the rug. But it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we have to bring this to light and um, see what's going on. And so, like, one of my students, she'll start her music studies in the fall out east. And so I'm like, okay, yes, solo contest is done, but we've got a good like April, May, June, July, four months before Mm -hmm. you move. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We need to really make sure that foundation to the house is really paved in nice and, you know, strong um, because Mm -hmm. I can't teach you everything in four months. That's impossible, but I can give you a little bit stronger of a foundation so that way when you go study with so-and-so you feel more prepared and just more aware Mm -hmm. yeah so I don't know I just wanted to highlight that because that could easily for the teachers out there and students out there on both sides of the coin right if you're going off to college please, please, please don't make the mistake I did <laughs> and thinking, oh, I got into college. <laughs> oh, exactly. I got into the music program. I'm good. And then August 28th comes around and you're like, oh, what's a C major scale and how do I do that three octaves? <laughs> right. Right? right. You know, and exactly. so I think we're all kind of fell into that maybe, hopefully mm-hmm. at some point in our lives. And then on the other side, teachers mm-hmm. like, hey, like it's so easy for the summer months to like be real chill or I mean, summer lessons are hard, too, with vacations, right? Yes. And so to to try to set up those summer goals now um, while or before the schedule gets really sketchy, it could Mm -hmm. help just to to keep that focus. Yes. Very cool. Oh, man, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it's it's hard because, you know, 
swimming pools and barbecues and, you know, are, right. are on the mind, which is good. We need that. You know, that's, uh-huh. we need that. That's part of our, you know, uh, R&R. But um, mm-hmm. especially for those kiddos who are going off to college, we want to do them well before that huge yes. um, chapter in their life, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. Perfect. Well, thanks for flying on the go with me. I just wanted to highlight that because I think uh, summer prep work is so important. It truly is. So is there a special project that you've completed or any projects that are a work in progress that you would like to mention? Completed? I I did a recital in March. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> I know some people are probably like, why is that a big deal? Because I have four kids under five. Wow. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't um, had a, re- really, I have not performed a recital with a full selection of works. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's probably been like six years. Yeah. I've done little, I mean, I play in the community all the time. I do pit orchestras and I'll participate in like combined recitals, that kind of thing. But yeah. I, I put together a program and, and did it. Kristen and I did a combined recital. So that was fun. We did a, we closed the program actually with um, Harry Friedman's uh, Toccata and it's for flute and soprano. Hmm. He's a Canadian composer and was, I should say. Hmm. And he wrote this or he did most of his um, voice works for his wife, who was a soprano. And He's known for his very eccentric pieces and it, you'll have to YouTube it. It's, it's a piece of work, mm. but it was so much fun. And the voice does daba 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 the whole time while the flute carries along. And, uh, it took a lot of work to get yeah. that, that duet ready. <laughs> it, wow. it was a challenge, but it was, it was a successful challenge. I can't tell you how many times you we were like, uh, let's just pull out the Irish folk song settings, <laughs> but, but we did it. We did it. We worked hard and yeah. it was, it was so fun. It was such a feeling of accomplishment to mm. put together such a challenging program. Mm. So that was fun to get back into performance again. Nice. And don't you feel like as a performer, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking for myself. Well, I can only speak for myself, but (laughs) (laughs) I guess as a musician or as a person, I identify Mm -hmm. so much with being an educator that sometimes I forget that I'm a performer too. And yeah, and I don't know if that's because we're so concerned with our students' responsibilities Mm -hmm. and their deadlines Mm -hmm. and such that we get wrapped Mm -hmm. up into their world. But for me, just stepping aside and saying, you are also a flutist, you are also a performer, and giving myself a portion of the day to have that role be fulfilled yeah. is really satisfying. And when I do, and when what resonated with me with what you said about the recital was we really worked hard on this challenging piece, and we didn't just, you know, do something that sounded like it would have been sight readable to you, the Irish tunes, right? So right. we did mm-hmm. something that took time. But I feel like as a performer, when I do what you just did, you know, give myself a challenging repertoire, I'm a better teacher because of it. Like I've learned mm-hmm. something as a flutist that I had no idea about, or like I got to explore, mm-hmm. be more creative, and then coming out on the other end, I get to mm-hmm. share that experience with my students better and It just is that circle again. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, you know, that note is really out of tune. And I found a really cool alternate trick fingering, you know, and that's based on, you know, my me challenging myself. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I resonated with that by and congratulating you immensely by putting yourself out there and saying, I haven't done this in six years, but here I go. (laughs) And I bet you learned a lot (laughs) through the process. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And I think what you said is 100% correct. We get so consumed with our teaching schedule. And and for me, just because I'm sure all of us, I know I shouldn't say that. I know all of us who have studios, we work very hard behind the scenes for our students. Mm. But with our boutique model, it it doesn't stop when I leave the studio. No. And I'm always planning ahead. And always trying to find something else, sending out weekly emails, communicating with parents. You know, it just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Or I feel like I'm not putting the studio 
aside and I need to mm-hmm. so that I can be a performer too. Mm-hmm. And that's why Chris and I had said, we need to just, we need to push ourselves and we need to do this. Mm-hmm. And, and you're right. Like I had to, I had to carve out time mm-hmm. during the day to handle studio work, practice and my family. And, and I did it and mm-hmm. it was fun and it was successful and the, and the reward was great. So nice. Yeah, you're right. It's all about priorities. Yeah. Making it work. And that's something, you know, this year I really pushed myself in entering in competitions. And I'm so glad I did because I got a lot of no's, but I got a couple yeses. And sure. but it didn't matter the no or yes. Like even the minute mm-hmm. I submitted my, you know, my recording, I felt really proud mm-hmm. of the work and I was like I learned new repertoire. I grew as mm-hmm. a flutist. I became a better teacher because of it, but it goes back mm-hmm. to what you said um, you have to carve out time. And how I found that time was, you know, I, I decided, well, does it really matter if I do two loads of dishes every day? You know, like, can right. it pile up, you know, <laughs> can, exactly. you know, can I, uh, meal prep a little bit better on Sunday? Can I, um, bunch up all my errands at the end of the week and not go out, you know, couple Mm -hmm. times here and there on Monday, Tuesday, can I just wait till Friday and do it one time? Because that Mm -hmm. adds up really fast. And so it's, it's being creative with your time and organizing it well. Right. Cool. Perfect. So we kind of already touched on this, but your summer goals and perhaps maybe goals for the boutique or your studio boutique for next academic year. Sure. I will continue to teach through the summer. And what I decided I'm going to do this summer is the first lesson that my students come to, we're going to talk about what goal they want to achieve over the six to eight lessons they have over Hmm. the summer. What can we start in June and finish in August before band starts? Hmm. And that for most of them will probably be developing a specific technique to help prepare for chair placements in August. <laughs> yeah. Some of them won't, won't care. It just depends on what school they go to. Some of them won't be too concerned about that. And they might have a competition they want to prepare for, or they just might want to work on, on tone study. I don't remember where I heard the concept of sound landscape, but for my visual learners, we'll find a picture or something that they relate to and they'll try to emulate that in their tone Hmm. So it, we just, I try to find one attainable goal. I will ask them to find, like I kind of, I guide them. I don't do it for them, but tell me one attainable goal that we can work on over the summer. And then when I have found that, like if we have that start date and we have that end date, the probability of reaching that goal is higher. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that's excellent. And I think it's good just to take, again, it kind of goes back to that carving out the time. You know, here we are like, we think tongue, tongue, fingers, we got to blah, 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 you know, get all down their throats. And <laughs> but, right. but just to take a step back and say, okay, let's carve out some time, five, 10 minutes of your lesson or the whole lesson. And let's, let's think and let's look bird's eye view. Let's kind of take a step back right. and see where we're going rather than yeah. getting so caught up in, you know, the minute to minute and the day to day things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then depending on what that goal is, I will then shape their lesson plans throughout the summer to help them reach that goal. Mm. And so, again, that's going to look different for every student. Mm-hmm. And that's OK. Yeah. Because they all have something different that they're trying to reach for. Yeah. And then they as a student feel heard. Oh, yes. You know, invalidated. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Very cool. You know, and you can go in as a teacher with some idea. I mean, you already have your methodologies and your literature and your rep, Mm -hmm. but then to kind of sculpt it for that individual. I can just imagine me being a student again and having my teacher listen to me. I would feel like I was Mm -hmm. a part of the process and not yes. just being told what to do. Yes. And yeah. that's a hundred percent the goal. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Very neat. Excellent. Is there anything else you want to share before we go to picks? I don't think so. Okay. Excellent. So uh, what pick would you like to share with the listeners today? So I have three and I decided I would do food, exercise and flute. Excellent. So <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> so last August, I started doing Beach Body on Demand, and I love it because it's easy and accessible, and all I have to do is push play every day, and my boys might exercise with me, or I might get up before they get up and I'll do it, but I used, before I got married, I, I ran half marathons, wow. and I loved it so much, but um, I don't have the time yeah. to just like go outside. So I miss it, but I needed something else. And I just can't speak highly enough about Beachbody because I am so strong and I can keep up with my kids now and my back is healed and my core is healing and I can like lift up my 30 and 40 pound children with ease. And I couldn't do that before. So it was literally transforming oh. and I just, yes, I can't speak highly enough about it. Awesome. Not to mention like playing my flute and my back doesn't hurt and my shoulders don't hurt. So it's, it's been good. Been strengthening my body. Awesome. Um, yeah. And then ghost light coffee is an awesome coffee house in downtown Dayton. They have the most amazing Americano I have ever had. And it is my favorite, but the ambiance is just so fun in there and they have free Wi-Fi and they have vegan pastries and it's just a super fun place to go for meetings, a studio collaboration, or even just take my kids and hang out for a little bit. Cool. So we really like that place. If you're ever in Dayton, check out Ghost Light Coffee. Awesome. And then the last thing I'm sure most flute friends have heard of, um, body mapping for flutists, what every flute teacher needs to know about the body by Lee Pearson. And I stumbled upon that on like an Amazon recommendation list maybe three or four years ago and bought it. And it has completely transformed the way I teach, how I play. I've done a session with Lee. She is amazing. Mm. And I just like, if you don't own that book, go get it because you want to set your students up for success and prevent injury, not cause injury, which you may be doing if you don't, if you have not read this book and understand how body mapping works. Yep. So Pre yeah, I love it. Awesome. Lee is amazing. She is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I met her officially at NFA. I can't remember if it was the San Diego one or Orlando. Okay. I think I met her at San Diego. Yeah. And she is very warming and um, kind and open hearted and just a real treasure. And so, yeah, I second that pick. <laughs> <laughs> and I love what you said about prevention. I think there's a Benjamin Franklin quote that says um, prevention is the best medicine. Yes. Yeah. Something along those lines. And that mm -hmm. could not be more true. <laughs> I experienced so much pain through my mm. flute career and in college even went through physical therapy and I remember bringing my flute into sessions and they would watch the way I play but even in college I, I realized they had no idea what they were telling me plus their hearts mm. <laughs> well they didn't you know they didn't understand the, the basics of, of flute position mm. and the pain always came back so it was just steroid shot after steroid shot and then, so it really wasn't until I, I learned how to eventually just manage the pain and stop. Pra I could practice like an hour a day mm. until the pain started. Mm. And then I'd have to put the flute down and then come back to the next day. But when I stumbled upon this flute manual and started really focusing on my body map and implementing what she had to say, it has really, the pain has just dissipated. It's been mm. wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy so, for you. Thanks. There's nothing yeah. worse than playing in pain. No kidding. Yes. <laughs> it's debilitating. It hurts. Yeah. So even now, it's just been, it's very interesting how many students have right pinky pain. Mm. And so I'm always, and, and they don't talk about it. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Yep. And so I've started, I've learned to ask, do you feel pain when you play? Because you shouldn't. And mm. let's talk about how to get rid of it. Mm. And that's made a big difference for many of them too. So oh, good. thank you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> there is also, I will put this feeler out. Please, please, please. It's not, I promise you, it's not a shameless plug. It's literally a light. <laughs> it's a lifeline because I did not think I was ever going to be able to play flute again um, after my master's. Mm -hmm. And I had a six year gap between my master's and my doctorate. 
And as I was preparing for DMA auditions, the pain got worse. And so I thought, and since we're talking about women of faith, and um, faith has also been kind of uh, one of the beginning themes of today's interview, I'll end Mm -hmm. today's interview with it. Um, (laughs) I really felt God say and put on my heart and he whispered in my ear, clear as day, DMA. And I said, okay, I heard you. You know, my husband prayed for me and family prayed for me. And not to sound rude or or disrespectful, but I told God, I said, you're crazy. (laughs) How do you want me to get a DMA when my hand's hurt and I can barely hold up the flute, you know? And it just blew my mind. And I prayed about it and he put uh, Dr. Susan Fain in my life, um, who thankfully was in the Arlington, Texas area. And not only does she have a DMA, but she has her doctorate in physical therapy. So Mm. I was able to go and use her as a resource and play, kind of like what you're saying, play for the doctors, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But luckily for me, she is a flutist. So, yeah, so she was able to say exactly what I was doing wrong. And Mm. a lot of it had to do, this is my public announcement, a lot of it had to do with the weight of my flute. Okay. So consider that when you're doing an upgrade or you're looking for another professional flute, really consider all the gadgets and gadgets that we throw on this metal tube, you know, the splitty mechanism, Mm. the D-sharp roller, the C-sharp roller, the C-sharp trill, what metal it is made out of and what metal it isn't made out of. I mean, all these things are definitely contributions to that weight. And you have to factor that in because it was too heavy for me. That's, I mean, okay. it just yeah. literally was just too heavy of a flute for my frame. And so we got a lighter flute um, later. This was when I was in my doctoral studies. And I had to start yeah. working out. I had to build back and arm muscles, mm-hmm. you know. And thankfully, I can um, gauge it now. And if there are any red flags, I'll stop and I know the warning signs, you know. So that way mm-hmm. I don't let it flare up anymore. But um, I yeah. so wish somebody would have said in my high school years or my college years, yeah. prevention, <laughs> you know, right. and so that, yeah. you know, that was one of the main pillars to this podcast was I, I needed mm-hmm. to get that information out there because if I could just help one person in the health realm of being a flutist, then I felt like I did my job. No kidding. Yeah. Yep. It's because it's not fun and it's really yeah. uh, scary. And Mm -hmm. um, there's so much fear. Like, I Mm -hmm. just got these professional degrees, and now I can't play. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, oh, my gosh. This whole talk today, Sarah, has been goosebumps through and through between. (laughs) (laughs) And I have to say, though, too, thank you very much for being vulnerable and open and sharing, willing to share um, that you as a professional flutist went through pain. Because I think that's a taboo in our world. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if more, especially, you know, maybe adults, if these students can see their adult mentors stand up and say, hey, this happened to me and not Mm -hmm. feel ridiculed or seen differently for having gone through that, then maybe we can prevent more injuries. Exactly. Yeah. And helping them realize that it's not normal. I think so many of them think it just comes with playing the flute and it doesn't. Hmm. It should not be that way. Mm. So. Yeah. That's a good point. Just bringing it to light. Mm -hmm. That's what I have found in my studio anyway. That's a good point. Um, I hadn't thought about that before. I'll see them shaking their wrist or bending their pinky. Okay. Do you feel something there? Yeah. It hurts. It shouldn't. Yeah. It shouldn't? (laughs) (laughs) No. Let's talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, good for you for being a teacher and, and noticing that because, you know, we could easily just bypass that and overlook it so easily and be like, oh, they're just stretching or, you know, but just to right. say, hey, right. red flag, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, I have a few picks to wrap up today's uh, talk. My first pick mm-hmm. is my graphic designer, Shauna. 
I won't say her last name because I have not gotten full permission to send out her contact information, but she mm-hmm. is the creator of my Flute 360 logo with the circle and that just very simple yeah. line going through it and very modern and sleek. But what I love about her the most is just her and her personality and how willing she is with her time. And so any flutist looking out for a graphic designer for your website or some publication you're putting together, consider Shauna and I will get the okay to share her email. Uh, My second pick is a game. It is Pass the Pigs. (laughs) Have you played it, Sarah? I'm not sure. No. I feel like I have, but I don't remember how it how it works. Okay. There's just um, two pig dice, and they are literally in the shape of a pig. And you roll them, and depending on the position they fall, that's the amount of points you get. Okay. It is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's a big board gamer. Uh-huh. To tell them about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's like, and the names are so funky, like the positions that they fall. Like if they're, <laughs> if both pigs are on all four legs, so like eight legs total, then it's like double trotter. Or if it's like oh both on their back, then it's like double razorback. And so. <laughs> That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun. And um, my third pick is a company called U Printing. They've printed off some Flute 360 flyers for me, and they were very prompt and easy to work with. I got my package super, super fast, and even the editor sent some finalizations uh, via email to me and saying, hey, you know, let's tweak this or tweak that, and he was wonderful. So I highly recommend that company. And my last pick is Bulletproof Musician. It is a an online course put together by a musician himself, Dr. Noah Kejiyama. And he is a not only a musician, but has a PhD and, and has done a lot of studying with sports psychology. I don't know if you've heard of the online course, but it is... No. Yeah, it's brilliant. It really helps musicians to find their triggers with like performance anxiety. Okay. And it just helps you to perform better. So I recommend those four picks. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for your time, talent, and energy. I know it is super late over there in Ohio. (laughs) It's got to be like (laughs) 930 over there. And you've got kiddos and a husband to put to bed. So I don't want to take up any more of your time. But um, this has been very wonderful, and you are such an encouragement, and just hearing your story and Kristen's story was such an uplifting message for me today, and I needed to hear it. So just know that that was a huge encouragement for me. Well, thanks for sharing that. It truly was a complete joy to be on your podcast. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. Anytime. We'll have to talk again because I love it when connections are made where it feels like we've known each other in past lives. And it's like, oh, right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You sure we haven't met? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Oh, shoot. Well, you have a great evening and um, we'll be in touch. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you, Sarah. Today's sponsor is brought to you by J&K Productions. Did you know that not only are they a production company for podcasts, but they are a recording company for musicians? Any musical recording needs that you may have, J&K Productions can fulfill that need. They have all the necessary equipment and expertise to record your next flute recording for college or graduate auditions, competitions, summer festivals, or a flute album. J&K Productions can record any setup imaginable, from solo flute, small chamber, flute and piano, and much more. Consider J&K Productions for your next recording project. Contact them at jkproductions.media. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 Podcast. For more information, please visit HeidiKBegay.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review in the iTunes store. Let's talk about flute.